When I was 12 years old, I made a decision. I was going to be rich. I looked up to successful people and wanted what they had, financial freedom. They seemed to be happier than everyone else, these rich people. But who was I kidding? Becoming rich would be an uphill battle. I was from a middle class family of humble means. There was no trust fund. And my parents didn't have work connections to land me my first job. The odds were stacked against me. But I still made that decision to be rich and started on my wealth building journey. And the path I chose to get me there, do it yourself investing, or in other words, DIY investing. Today, I manage a $300,000 stock portfolio. I'm 29, almost 30, I'll be turning 30 in August, and my stock portfolio grows by the day. My goal is $1 million in stocks by the time I'm 35 years old. In this video, I'll show you how, or I'll teach you how, um, I went about my eight step wealth building journey and share with you how you can build wealth by investing in stocks too. So how I became a do it yourself investor. These are the eight steps. Step number one, study successful investors. I realized that if I wanted to make money by investing in stocks, I had to study successful stock investors. Common sense, right? Isaac Newton said it best. If I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. So from age 12 to age 18, I read around 50 books on the topic of investing in the stock market. These were the six most important investment books for me. The Intelligent Investor. It was through Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor that I was introduced to value investing and the important concepts of margin of safety, Mr. Market, and intrinsic value. Warren Buffett called it the best book on investing ever written. The second book, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. Philip Fisher, the author, opened up my world to growth stocks. It was after I read Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits that I started paying more for stakes in higher quality and faster growing businesses on the stock market. The third book went up on Wall Street. There are so many easy to implement lessons shared in What Up on Wall Street, but what really struck me was Peter Lynch's focus on buying what you know. That has saved me from many dog stocks on the market. Fourth book, Market Wizards. Jack Schwager introduced me to some of America's top traders and market wizards. But instead of telling me their, his favorite stock picks, what they buy, he explained in the book their investment frameworks. In other words, why and how they buy the stocks they do. Fifth book, Buffetology. I remember reading this book in Cuba on the beach. I devoured it within one day. There are many books that endeavor to explain how Warren Buffett invests in stocks, but most come up short. In my opinion, Buffetology is the book that gets it right. It's written by Mary Buffett. Now, she had married into the family years ago. Finally, the sixth book, which is a big inspiration for me, is The Money Masters. It's a classic that's fun to read. The Money Masters shares winning strategies from some of the world's best investors who ever lived. It's a book that I'll read every couple of years to brush up on investing essentials. Now, I would also study the Forbes' list of 500 richest people in the world and Canadian businesses' richest Canadians. I'm a Canadian myself. And then all became very clear to me. I could be rich by earning money, saving the proceeds, and then investing in stocks as other rich people, such as Warren Buffett, had done before me. Step number two. Earn and save money when you were young. This is huge. I had opened my very first bank account when I was about eight years old. As you can imagine, there wasn't much there. Cash from birthdays, Christmas, and some chores. Maybe $500 in total. 
uh, when I was eight years old, from what I can remember. I had to earn and save more money fast. So I did what Warren Buffett had done at my age, delivered newspapers. At the age of 12, I joined Penny Saver, which is now defunct here in Canada, and became a Penny Saver paper boy for three neighborhoods in my hometown of Mississauga. I deposited each paycheck, along with any other money, straight into my savings account. Step three, understand how to compound money. Once I turned 14 and just started high school, my savings account had grown to about $5,000. At that point, I wanted to invest in stocks, but because of my age, I wasn't eligible to open a brokerage account. So I started with bonds. I went to the branch, my local branch to buy bonds. After returning home from the bank, I placed those newly purchased Canadian savings bonds into a small but sturdy wooden box hiding it safely under my bed. I was so proud. I knew that my bonds would generate interest for me on the principal amount, which was $5,000. Compound interest is like magic, I thought. And the earlier I started investing money, the longer my money would compound or work for me. Throughout high school, I would work several odd jobs at a mechanic shop, at a meat department, and at Best Buy as an associate all the while saving money from each paycheck and then buying more bonds to further compound my money through interest. Step number four, invest in stocks for the long run. I turned 18 and was ready to enter university. Party time, not. In September 2005, I moved into my cozy on-campus dorm room at the University of Waterloo here in Canada. But even more exciting was that I finally opened my first brokerage account. Again, at the age of 18, I was eligible. By investing in stocks in the stock market, I could compound returns through both capital appreciation, in other words, when stock prices go up, and dividend income, quarterly dividends that are paid out from the companies that you own in your stock portfolio. I'd already cashed out of my bonds, which at that time equaled $10,000. So I invested that $10,000 evenly into five stocks, owning a $2,000 stake in each company. At this point, I felt like a true capitalist. This is how my idols, Benjamin Graham, Philip Fisher, Peter Lynch, and Warren Buffett got rich by investing in stocks. As I earned money through University of Waterloo co-op job placements, which I recommend to every young person, before you join a university, find out if they have a paid internship or co-op program. It's wonderful. Uh, you can you earn money, lots of money. You can pay your tuition, um, your housing, and you might have some money left over for stocks, as I did. As I earned money, again, um, to those co-op jobs, I bought more stocks. My portfolio grew and grew and grew. I was on top of the world. And then the financial crisis of 2008 happened. Step number five, capitalize on crises in the market. In other words, buy low when you can. I was 21 years old when the entire world seemed to have ended in 2008 or so. Most people thought at the time, the financial crisis thrust economies around the world into recession and stock markets collapsed. My stock portfolio imploded with it. I suffered around a 50% decline in my stock portfolio from peak to trough. The financial press at that time in 2008 was all doom and gloom, sell, sell, sell. Most people were scared and converted their stocks to cash. So I invested all of my savings into my existing stock holdings. Crazy, right? At that time, everybody was selling, but I was buying. When I pulled the trigger, I was scared stiff, but I'm glad I made that move as my stocks would soon rebound, pushing above pre-financial crisis highs into the years to come. Simply put, at that time of crisis, I bought quality stocks on sale 
like American Express, RBC, and Nike, to name a few. It was like a 50% off sale. Was I a young genius, able to time the market? Nope. I simply learned from Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing, that economies and markets operate in cycles. And if you also look up a gentleman named Ray Dalio, he has videos on YouTube that talk about debt cycles and how economies and the stock market run on these debt cycles. Therefore, an investor can capitalize on manic markets rather than become fearful and flee. Indeed, 2009, that was the rebound year after the crisis, was a great year to be a value investor. I would make a similar move in February 2016 to capitalize on a bear market in Canadian stocks where the Toronto Stock Exchange declined close to 25% from its high in September 2014. Why was I so confident? I know that the average bear market on the Toronto Stock Exchange, another, another name for it, TSX, has declined 28%, lasting nine months on average, while the average bull market has advanced a whopping 124%, lasting 50 months. So based on the historical evidence then since 1956, I should eventually be rewarded in the long run when I take on risk, that is investing in cheaper stocks during bear markets. As Warren Buffett said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Step number six, manage and refine your stock portfolio. In 2010, upon graduating from the University of Waterloo, I had about $50,000 in my stock portfolio. More money than any of my friends. And again, you can achieve this too um, if you work side gigs, if you join a good university with a good co-op program, you know, work those summers. Um, if you don't join a co-op program, remember save and invest your money as much as you can. Now, upon graduating from university, that was an inflection point for me, as at that time, the compounding, the magic of compounding started to take real effect. And I was just about to enter a full-time career and earn a much bigger paycheck plus bonus, which meant more money for stocks. By 2013, three years in my, into my first time for a full-time job, my portfolio had grown to about $125,000. However, I realized that I could build wealth faster if I compounded returns at an even greater rate. So at the age of 25, I made it my mission to build a portfolio that actually beat the market. I started watching BNN Market Call here in Canada. It's similar to CNBC. Reading the best investing books and rereading the classic investing books that we talked about before. Reading magazines, here in Canada, like Money Sense, Canadian Money Saver, and Canadian Business, and of course, following the top investors from around the world. From that knowledge, I restructured my portfolio into one I'm comfortably maintaining since. Here's how my stock portfolio today breaks down. The framework for my portfolio is as follows. One third is missed price large cap stocks. The other third are speculative takeover stocks. And the other third are small and mid cap capital compounder stocks. I'll explain all three major buckets in my stock portfolio. The first, mispriced large caps. For example, I started loading up on Starbucks stock in 2008 at around $15 per share. At a time when Starbucks was oversaturating themselves in the market and with most experts doubting the strategy of selling high priced coffee, especially with the financial crisis looming and new entrants in the coffee business, such as McDonald's. However, when I bought Starbucks stock after their huge decline in their market, I never witnessed a drop in traffic among the stores nearby me. Starbucks had and still has huge competitive advantage then and now i thought if starbucks goes out of business that's probably when the world will end 
And seriously, do you think business people would ever switch their coffee meetings from Starbucks to McDonald's? Second bucket, speculative takeovers. I also dabble in speculative takeovers. When Lowe's first bid for Rona fell through, I bought a stake in Rona and just sat on that position. I speculated that Lowe's, an American company or another company, maybe Home Depot, would eventually come back and eventually scoop up Rona, a Canadian home, um, home hardware business, with the Quebec government's approval, of course, this time around. So when Lowe's came back years later, bid on Rona a second time and won the approval to buy them out, my Rona share shot up 100% in one day. Well worth the wait. The third bucket, small and mid cap capital compounder stocks. This is the most successful bucket in my portfolio. It's these small cap and mid cap stocks that I own. These are smaller companies on the stock market. Uh, they're not as big as the American Express, Johnson & Johnson, or Home Depots of the market. Why do I like these stocks? I find that as long as the intrinsic value of these businesses grow every year, so does the price of the stock. I'm actually upset when one of my capital compounder stocks gets bought out because most of the time there's so much more potential for growth. It forces me to go out hunting for an equally remarkable ca capital compounder to replace the buyouts. You can learn more about the criteria I look for in cop capital compounder stocks by going to my blog at robinspeziali.com. Step number seven in my wealth building journey, stick to your investment strategy. From my quarter life crisis, age 25 and onwards, I continue to earn, save and invest in stocks using this same strategy I talked about before with those three buckets in my stock portfolio. So now at the age of 29 in the year 2017, I have built a $300,000 stock portfolio. And you can reach this point too. With a bigger capital base, it's amazing how much more rapidly my portfolio can compound. For example, a 10% return will thrust my portfolio to $330,000 next year without even adding additional capital. I say a 10% return because over the long run, since 1934 at least, the Toronto Stock Exchange, the TSX, has delivered a 9.8% annual compound return. That's despite recessions, bear markets, and world crises. But there's no guarantee. Nevertheless, $1,000 invested in the Canadian uh, stock market in 1934 would have grown to $1,600,000 by 2014 with 9.8% compound returns. Now, that's magic in my world. Finally, step number eight, always learn and grow as an investor and stay humble. My do it yourself investing journey has been fulfilling so far, but I also know that I can further improve my odds of success by continuously learning and improving my investing craft. This is why I recently met with some of Canada's top investors. I met with 28 of these investors in total. Uh, who are from mutual funds, they're hedge fund managers, these are successful private investors. These top investors told me how they invest in stocks, bonds, and options. They shared their proven investing strategies that have never been documented before. It was enlightening. So what I did, I decided to put all their investment advice um, into a compilation. That actually evolved into a book uh, I was able to sign a, a publishing contract with a publisher called ECW Press here in Toronto, Canada. My book is called Market Masters and it features all these investing strategies of all 28 investors. You can purchase Market Masters in Chapters, Indigo and Coles in Canada. You can even purchase it online on Amazon. It's available for Americans, Canadians, all around the world. So let's recap. This was my eight step wealth building journey. How I went from zero dollars to a $300,000 stock portfolio today before turning 30 years old in 2017. 
Step number one, study successful investors. Read all the books you can, go online, type in top investors, read my book, Market Masters, just learn from the best. Step number two, earn and save money when you're young, okay? Um, time value of money means that uh, the younger you start saving and investing your money, the longer you can compound money and the faster it will grow. Step number three, understand how to compound money. Look it up. Albert Einstein is quoted as saying, I don't know if it's a direct quote from him, that uh, it's one of the uh, wonders of the world, compounding money. Step number four, invest in stocks for the long run. Um, studies do show that stocks for the long run do beat the returns of bonds, of gold, of treasury bills. So it's important, if you wanna build wealth, invest in stocks. Step number five, capitalize on crises in the market. Buy low when you can. This means that you want to be buying in the stock market when you can realize the highest compound returns. And when you can buy companies at a lower price, um, you lock yourself in for, for higher returns, the potential for higher returns. That's just how it works. Like they're saying, buy low, sell high. In my case though, when I buy low, um, and I'm continuously buying stocks of good companies over the years, if they stay great companies, if they're growing their book value per share, earnings per share, free cash flow per share, year after year, I never want to sell those great companies. Step number six, manage and refine your stock portfolio. I talked about my stock portfolio framework. Um, you can come up with your own, but it's very important to have a strategy for how you're investing in the stock market, or you'll just change your strategy year by year. That's recipe for failure. Step number seven, again, stick to your investment strategy. This is very important. If you look at somebody like Warren Buffett, he's stuck to his investment strategy. Um, he is. He went from, though in his early years, he went from a deep value investor to more of a value growth investor today, but he still invests on this premise, buy what you know, okay? He only invests in stocks with predictable cash flows and ones in which have a competitive advantage. Um, those companies usually stay around for a lot longer. Uh, they don't go bust after a couple of years. Okay. Finally, number eight, always learn and grow as an investor. Um, you know, it's important to stay humble. Even some of these top investors, uh, if they get too cocky, uh, they can definitely stumble. So um, if you have a stock that's on the decline, if that business is deteriorating, you have to rethink your thesis as to why you bought that stock, okay? Um, the stock market can definitely humbles a lot of people. Anyways, thank you very much for listening. Again, my name is Robin Speziali, and I am the national best-selling author of Market Masters, Interviews with Canada's Top Investors, which is available at Chapters, Indigos and Coles here in Canada, as well as online on amazon.ca and amazon.com. Um, you can find more links um, below in the video. Uh, please email me if you have any questions. Visit my blog at robinspeziali.com and happy investing everybody.